Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over a big warm up for everybody east of the Rockies and a cool down from the Rockies westward. We're going to be going over this upcoming interesting pattern. Uh, we're going to be breaking down for you guys, showing you your high temperatures throughout the next week and a couple more days as well. And we're also just going to be generally discussing what you should be expecting. We're going to start to get some, into some very, very nice weather with some temperatures up in the 60s, 70s, even 80s further to the south with drier than normal conditions for some areas, although it will actually be quite active. So uh, growing season uh, will get off to a good start, uh, and we definitely have very good conditions if you're doing farming or gardening this year. Uh, so we have a very nice pattern upcoming, warmer temperatures, uh, a little bit wetter though, uh, but generally it should be a fairly nice pattern. Let's get right into it and let's start off with your current National Weather Service page. As you can see, it's actually quite inactive. As of right now, we have some high wind watches and wind advisories for parts of Oregon and California as well as some wind advisories back through western Texas and uh, eastern New Mexico with some red flag warnings in that pink area for parts of Texas, Oklahoma, and New Mexico. We also have some winter weather advisories for some of the higher elevations in parts of Colorado and uh, New Mexico, as well as for some of the higher elevations in northwestern or western parts of Washington. We have avalanche warnings for northwestern Montana, as well as some more uh, winter weather advisories, in effect, for northern Vermont and northern upstate New York near the Adirondacks, with some wind chill advisories, in effect, for northern and northwestern Maine uh, for, for that area. That's where you're expecting some of those wind chill advisories. And then also some wind advisories in effect for western Maine uh, and even one county in eastern and east central New Hampshire there. We still have a bunch of flood warnings going on from the Mississippi River up through the Ohio River uh, and that area is right along the Mississippi and Ohio River uh, rivers. That's what we're dealing with a lot of flooding still even after uh, over a week or over a few days uh, from, that, uh, from that storm system moving through. Uh, unfortunately, we still do have flooding issues throughout those areas. Yesterday, your continental United States high temperature was uh, tied between four areas in Florida and Arizona. We had uh, in Fort Lauderdale and the executive airport, they got to 87 degrees. Pompano Beach, Florida, they got to 87 degrees as well. West, Ken uh, West Kendall, uh, Florida, they got to 87 degrees. And four miles southeast of Fountain Hills, Arizona also got to 87 degrees. Uh, and then the low temperature for the entire country, Peter Sinks, Utah, uh, they, got to, uh, they got to right around negative. 22 degrees and then the uh, highest precipitation or rainfall report was in Milford Georgia which is in southwestern Georgia they got 2.81 inches of rainfall and they finally got the snowfall maps back up and running so the high snowfall report yesterday was in Molas Pass uh, Colorado they got 8 inches of snowfall uh, and there were many reports within southwestern Colorado of 4 plus inches of snowfall as well so this is an interesting map uh, unrelated to the topic of today's video but this is an interesting map that I found uh, yesterday. Uh, one of the National Weather Service uh, National Weather Service offices posted this on their website, and it is actually quite interesting. This is showing you uh, how many how many lightning strikes per square mile you typically see per year, uh, and you can see that we have really this belt of really severe uh, severe activity in terms of thunders, uh, th uh, thunder and lightning, uh, and it's right between this area where you see the heaviest and the highest amounts, uh, and then it really tapers off as, as you get further to the north. Uh, also, something that's very interesting is that look at the western United States. They really don't see too much in terms of severe weather, uh, and that's also the same case for uh, parts of New England. Uh, those two areas are where you, you you typically see the least severe weather, and of course, it's going to be centered more over the southern United States uh, and parts of the central plains as well. So, let's start getting into that big warm-up that I was talking about. And let's discuss your high temperatures because these are going to be some very marvelous high temperatures. We're going to have temperatures in the 60s, 70s, 80s. So not too warm. Uh, it's going to be that comfortable warm temperatures. Uh, you're going to have nice winds out of the south with some nice breezy activity. So it will be a very, very nice pattern that we're going into. So definitely enjoy the spring weather. Get outside and go enjoy uh, the warmer temperatures and the warmer weather. Uh, this is by tomorrow. So we're dealing with high temperatures in the afternoon. 
getting up to about 60 to 70 degrees all throughout the uh, southern part of the United States, but still isn't too wildly warm. You know, you're dealing with uh, some of these warmer temperatures staying fairly far to the south. You still have a little bit of warm, uh, warm, uh, warmer conditions moving up through parts of the central plains, northern plains even, uh, but it's nothing extreme. We still have this big trough into the uh, eastern third of the country, bringing in some colder temperatures. So for Friday, still cold over a lot of those areas. Here to be by Saturday, not a lot of changes. It gets a little bit warmer over the central plains uh, and even parts of the northern plains, but still, uh, we're not dealing with anything tremendous for the rest of the country. It's really going to be just that, cent uh, that central column of the United States that gets the warmer temperatures as of right now. So this is by Saturday, and we still have that big trough into the uh, eastern part of the country and still some chillier temps uh, back out through the western part of the country. And then if we move this forward, by Sunday, this is when the pattern still gets uh, starts to get moving again. So uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, rather chilly over parts of the eastern third of the country, uh, the central part of the country, dealing with some fairly warm temperatures throughout that area uh, throughout that time period. But it's now when this low pressure, which is going to be further to the north, starts to head further to the east. That's when you're going to get your warm temperatures to come back. So you're dealing with 60s and even 70s getting its way all the way up to parts of the central plains uh, you have 65 degree readings plus all the way up to minnesota and south dakota so very very warm conditions even 60s getting to the canadian border and then you're going to see that that trough which is still in parts of the northeast uh, starts to recede so now parts of the great lakes the southeast are getting in on the warmer temperatures we have 70s even popping up for uh, this area in the Central Plains back through uh, down to Texas. So we have 70s all the way up to South Dakota, parts of Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, Kansas. So getting very, very far up uh, further to the north. Uh, we're actually dealing with some uh, 80s even or uh, high 70s into the lower 80s for some of these areas in the southwest. So definitely getting a lot nicer, except if you live in that eastern uh, maybe quarter of the country. That's where uh, you might start to deal with some colder temperatures. But even those areas are going to warm up. Look at Tuesday, uh, the 9th of March. We're looking at 70s getting all the way up to parts of Minnesota, South Dakota, North Dakota as well. All through here, very warm conditions getting into the 60s, anywhere where you're in the yellow. So very, very warm uh, for this time of year. You can see that uh, except for the uh, East Coast and especially the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast, everywhere else in the uh, eastern part of the country is above 60. And even those areas are warming up compared to their normal. They're in the mid 50s low 60s in some of those areas even popping up uh, you get into northern New England of course your high temperature still in the 40s and 30s uh, unfortunately for those of you who like the warmer conditions but it is warming up and it is getting better if you do like the warmer temperatures so here would be by Wednesday the 10th of March we're now dealing with fairly significant warm temperatures moving up through the central part of the country. We have mid-70s getting all the way up to Iowa, Nebraska, and Missouri. Uh, there, we're dealing with those 60s spreading further to the north. Uh, so now parts of upstate New York, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, some areas uh, even a little bit further south of there are getting into the 60s by this point. So this is by Wednesday. Here's by Thursday. Now this is when it starts to plateau a little bit. So the northern part of the country gets into some of those slightly chillier temperatures near average temperatures uh, it is still actually a bit above normal for some of those areas but it's where you get into the southern two-thirds of the country that's where you get into the warmer temperatures and you can even see some 80s or 90s popping up for parts of Texas and even a little bit of Florida by that point here to be by Friday, March 12th, still very warm for much of the southeast. Uh, and if we look at Saturday, still, again, very, very warm for many of these areas. A little bit colder as you get to the north, but still, you look at the Tennessee Valley, Ohio Valley, southeast, south central part of the country, and you're in the mid-70s, the low 80s. That's pretty much the optimal temperatures. The 70s is usually the most comfortable temperature range, at least in my opinion. And it looks like you're going to be stuck in that temperature range for quite a while. So definitely enjoy the night weather and get get outside and go enjoy all those warmer temperatures here's what your temperature anomalies look like uh, and we're dealing with very warm conditions back up through parts of the northern plains cooler conditions back through the eastern part of the country this is basically showing you the departure from normal so uh, if you're 10 if you're if you see a minus 10 on that screen that means that you're 10 degrees below normal below your average in that area if you're 25 up in uh, North Dakota that means that you're 25 degrees above normal uh, for uh, your area so you can see those very warm temperatures back through the northern plains that's going to start to head a little bit further to the east so you can see by saturday 
Here's by Sunday, we're dealing with that moving further east. By Monday into Tuesday, very warm still, and now it's starting to overtake parts of the east coast. And now pretty much everywhere east of the Rockies is getting in on the warmer temperatures. Uh, you can see from Texas all the way to Maine, warmer temperatures, even up to 25 degrees above normal in some of those areas in Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, and back through parts of the northern Great Lakes. And then here to be by Thursday uh, into Friday, it starts to weaken out a little bit, but still you can see those overall warmer temperatures for much of the eastern part of the country, cooler con uh, conditions for parts of the western United States, so you guys are actually going to get a little bit colder than normal in those areas. And then by Saturday, uh, Saturday the 13th, and into Sunday, it is going to go back to a bit of a more uh, average pattern, but still, it'll be above average for many of those areas. Here's what the upper air maps are showing. So this is showing you where your low and high pressures are, uh, an area that would look like this, and the blues, the greens, purples, that's where you have low pressure, and the red, and, the, and kind of the brown color, and the orange and yellow, that's where you have a high pressure. High pressure usually means warmer conditions, drier conditions, for the most part, a uh, blue, green, purple, that's when you're uh, looking at a storm system or colder conditions uh, typically. And this gives you a good idea of what's happening in the upper parts of the atmosphere. So we have a little system moving back through the southern United States. That's going to cool it down, but you can see this impressive ridge back up through into parts of Manitoba, Saskatchewan, uh, back through some of the northern territories in Canada there. And that's what's really bringing those warmer temperatures. You can see how far north those very uh, the, the very high anomalies are and they're all the way up into central and northern Canada there. So that's bringing up all that warm air from Mexico and some of the southern United States, and that's pulling it up to the northern plains, parts of southern Canada as well. You can still see that huge trough into the eastern uh, United States with that, big, uh, with that big ridge into the middle of the country right here. So... We have an amplified pattern by this point, and it's going to start to flatten out, weaken out a little bit. So now much of the eastern United States into that more milder pattern with the high pressure in place by Monday. And then by Tuesday, that high pressure is shifting over to the Great Lakes, the northeast. We have a storm system coming in uh, through parts of the western United States. So we have an elongated trough moving throughout that region that's bringing in those colder temperatures. And then if we go through Wednesday, Thursday, uh, Friday, still warmer for the east, colder for the west and into saturday still warmer and colder for both of those regions here's what the uh, temperature maps look like from the climate prediction center and what they're expecting in terms of the chances of above or below normal uh, uh, temperatures for that time frame so this is from tuesday until saturday uh, so tuesday the uh, the 9th through uh, saturday the 13th uh, of next week we're looking at very, very good chances of being above normal if you live back through uh, this area, and very good chances of being below normal if you live through this area uh, further to the west. Kind of the opposite of, we, of what we were dealing with in February, where we had pretty much the complete opposite pattern. We had much colder in the east, much warmer in the west, and if you look at the 8 to 14 day outlook, still hangs on, so you're still dealing with colder temperatures for much of the eastern half of the United States uh, by uh, Thursday the 11th all the way until Wednesday the 17th. Uh, and we have warmer temperatures for the east, colder for the west again. Uh, so definitely a very interesting pattern and a very, uh, very nice mild pattern uh, that's going to be very, very good to start to get into that springtime feeling. And here's what the three to four week outlook looks like. So this is from March 13th through the 26th. Uh, and we're looking at a 70% chance or greater uh, if you live anywhere within these two lines. So anywhere within this area is where you have a 70% chance, 70% uh, plus chance of being above north. Normal, and here's that 60% chance plus area. So anywhere east of that yellow line is where you have at least a 60% chance of being above normal within that time frame. So enjoy the warm temperatures. It looks like it's definitely uh, coming and it's definitely uh, a very, very uh, favorable pattern if you do like warmer temperatures. We dealt with the cold in February and now we're dealing with the warmth as we get into early spring and this might even carry on through the rest of spring. We'll still have to track it out uh, and I will be tracking all of these systems, all these pattern changes changes on my channel so if you do enjoy the content please consider liking the video subscribing and turning on notifications and i'll see you guys in the next video goodbye